Right, so I applied for FCC back in January of this year, and uh, they contacted me in July. And I was kind of quite surprised after that long time, and they informed me that I was the recipient of $7,000 in order to purchase PPE equipment, which happened to be the wildland firefighting coveralls. Well, the way in which they help is for wildland firefighting, grass fires, uh, crop fires, and before all they had was bunker gear. And the bunker gear can weigh up to 30 pounds, very heavy, especially and hot in July, August. So now they'll be able to have these coveralls, which are fire retardant with the uh, Nomex material, and they'll be able to fight the fires more comfortably, move a lot quicker, and, and to get into areas where they probably couldn't do it before. To take care of them, it's, it's just the same as washing clothes, basically. Uh, so these type of materials and that, so if they got dirty, if we were out of fire and that, you simply can wash them in the washing machine and get the carcinogens and all that out. The bunker gear, a little more difficult because uh, of course the material and such. And with the bunker gear, the wash machine, we can only wash one or two at a time. With these coveralls, we can probably wash about six, seven, eight at, a, at, at one time, so a lot quicker. 24 coveralls for all the firefighters and it, it came out to just shy of 11,000 so we had to offset with our own budget but I'm telling you the $7,000 without that we couldn't have done it. Right, so it started in 2018 when I brought it to council to say that we need a new fire hall. And there was all kinds of health and safety issues which brought this upon. So from there, we went into the planning phase. And after we uh, awarded a contract to the contractor, it was one year by the time we moved out of the current fire hall where we're standing right now. We moved to the Municipal Operations Center for a year and they were able to build a, this brand new fire hall on top of the old one and we moved moved back in, so it was a pretty good process. Right, so the old one uh, was uh, built in 1965. It was a welding shop, and then uh, the town bought it in 69, upgraded uh, by two vehicle bays in 97. So you have to think about the time frame and when it was built and such. Uh, it did not have any ventilation. It did not have a backup generator, for example. It didn't have a bunker gear room to store bunker gear and such. So those there, the health, dis health and safety concerns are where the improvements were made here. Uh, uh, the other thing was the admin side in the old fire hall uh, wasn't, didn't have a sealed door. So now we have a clean and dirty side where the guys, when they come in with their bunker gear, they're not allowed to go on the administration side. And rightfully so, especially if they have carcinogens and, and fuel and things like that on their bunker gear, you don't want it to come on the admin side. So these are vast improvements. A group of firefighters, six firefighters, got together with a planner and they designed this fire hall to make sure that it was going to operate the way they wanted it to. And so now the way in which they designed it where the firefighters park on the uh, south end of the fire hall, enter there, they go directly to the bunker gear room, they're able to get dressed and make it to the trucks and drive straight out. Uh, before, uh, they didn't have that and it was uh, the way, that, just the way they did it, half the firefighters would come to the fire hall, the other half would drive right to the scene and they'd have to wait for the truck with bunker gear on it to get dressed there. So it's way more efficient, way faster and uh, when we get on the scene of a working fire, when the guys are coming off the trucks, they're dressed, they got their self-contained breathing apparatus on, and they're ready to go to work.